Welcome to Backwoods Pursuit for part three of our elk calling series. Today we're going to do a, a bugle tube elk call review. We're going to look at a handful of the different bugle tubes that are on the market offered by Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls and Phelps Game Calls and show you, demonstrate for you the difference between some of the, the, the bugle tubes on the market and how that can affect the sound. As always, we'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe to the channel here as well as check us out on our website backwoodspursuit.com and Facebook and Instagram. And again, I'll put links to all these products in the description for you. Let's go get started. All right, so the first bugle tube we're looking at here is the Rocky Mountain Bully Bowl Extreme. This is a staple in the, in the elk hunting community and is just a great call that gives you a ton of volume and some great low end tones. Um, we're also going to be looking at here the, the brand new Rocky Mountain Rogue. This one, as you can tell, is a little bit different in size to the Bully Bowl Extreme. It's a little bit shorter, um, but it also gives you that, that uh, spring on the inside. It helps with some of the tonal transitions when you're working through uh, a bugle with your diaphragm. Additionally, in the Rocky Mountain line, we're going to be looking at this guy. This is one where you don't have to use your diaphragm. This is the, the pick a bull, I believe, is what it's called. So it allows you, if you're someone who just can't get the hang of a diaphragm or don't have the, the ability to, to utilize one of those, this gives you the ability to have a pretty good sound without having to use the diaphragm. So we'll demonstrate that for you also. All right, so first I'm gonna use this brand new Rogue, followed up by the Bully Bull Extreme, so you can hear the difference between these two. So first the Rogue. Now the Bully Bull Extreme. Now the rogue again. And then the bully bull extreme. So as you can tell, there's a little bit of a tone difference in there. Um, this one has a little bit more of a, uh, the Rogue here is a little bit, the um, best way to describe would be kind of a, that spring in there is, you can hear that resonating in the call. Um, the the Bully Bull Extreme is a little bit louder though, and it gives you a little bit better on the tones on the low end. So next, I'm gonna do the two Phelps bugle tubes side by side. So first, the Unleashed. And now the unrivaled, the smaller one. The unleashed again. And the unrivaled again. So there's those two. As you could probably tell, you get a lot better low end sound, a lot better volume out of the Unleash, the bigger one. But surprisingly, you don't lose as much as I thought that you would from this Unrivaled. It's actually a pretty darn good sound for the size of this thing and the weight. It's really a lightweight. It's a good ultralight option if you want to take something in a long backcountry trip. But I really don't want to carry one that's this big. So there's those two differences. Now let's do a difference or side by side with um, the Unleashed here next to the Bully Bull Extreme because those are probably the two most similar. So first let's do the Bully Bull Extreme. <laughs> And now the Unleashed. Bully 
Bully Bull Extreme again. And the Unleashed again. All right, so that's those two side by side. The difference is that I could hear, and hopefully you could hear them in the, the camera there. The Bully Ball Extreme has a little more of a higher pitch or that little more of the shrill sound coming through it because the barrels are just not uh, quite the same size. The, the Unleashed is slightly larger diameter, and it gives you a little bit better of bass tones or that, that chuckle and grunt. Um, the the Bully Ball Extreme is a little bit louder, I would say, and it, it, it doesn't give you quite as good of a low-end chuckle, but it's still a really solid, really a good low-end sound. The, the Unleashed here is just, I mean, it's, uh, it's the, the bugle tube that you want to have if you like that, that, real, that, that real low end when you're chuckling, when you're getting that growl in there. Um, they're both awesome sounding grunt tubes and bugle tubes. It just depends on what you like better, what, what sound you like better. Um, they both are nice and loud. Um, again, a little bit deeper, to, uh, deeper tone with this one, a little... Uh, less deep tone with this one, but a little bit better volume. So, um, kind of depends on what you like. Let's compare two others here. All right, let's put the Rogue next to the Unrivaled here. Um, obviously, a lot different designs. Uh, the Rogue is a lot larger diameter, and it does have that spring on the inside. But weight-wise, these are kind of close. The, the Unrivaled is a several ounces lighter than the Rogue, but let's see what they sound like side by side. So first the Rogue. Now the Unrivaled. Now the rogue again. <laughs> and the unrivaled. <laughs> All right, that is the Rogue and the Unrivaled side by side. You can probably tell the Rogue has a little bit better bass tones to it, or lower end tones. It is a, a larger uh, diaphragm or a larger bugle tube overall size wise, height wise. They are almost, well, they are about identical. Uh, the Rogue being a little bit bigger is a little bit heavier, uh, just by a couple ounces, two or three ounces. Um, but this little Unrivaled by Phelps holds its own and has a great sound for the size that it is. So let's look at the last one here, the Bite and Blow style. All right, so obviously this is quite a bit different than the others because you're using the, the, in the, the diaphragm here that's part of the call. Um, so it's a little bit more limiting. You can't get the chuckles quite as well. You can't do some of the other things you can with a diaphragm, of course. Of the, of the bugle tubes that I've found that you don't use a diaphragm, this is the best sounding call. I'm going to do the best I can to, to use this and get a good sound out of it for you. <laughs> All right, so there you have it with that one. Again, this is not a call that, that I would profess to be all that great at, so with a little bit of practice, I could probably make some better sounds out of this one. But it does a pretty good job. If you're someone that can't use those diaphragms, this is a great call. One other thing to mention here is you do have this extension here. You can uh, uh, pack that in there and make it nice and easy to pack, or you can pull that out that way. Gives you some extra flexibility. Do have a nice diameter there, so it gives you some good low ends. Um, great little call if you're someone that can't use that diaphragm. So, thanks for joining us here today on part three of the Elk Call Review se uh, Series. It's been a lot of fun to put these all side by side. Hopefully, you've been able to make a determination for yourself some of the calls that you want to check out and try this year when you're out in the elk woods. 
go ahead and check out the links in the description there to each of these products, each of the bugle tubes, each of the diaphragm calls, as well as each of those external read calls. There's some awesome calls there, all great calls, and they all sound really good with a little bit of practice. The best thing is just make sure you find what fits for you. Go ahead and subscribe again. We sure appreciate the support and for following us along. We'll see you next time.